Okay, I didn't want this video to just be a practice thing because there's lots to go over on how to get stepped animation action looking good in the sequencer and Unreal Engine. Let's slow this down so that you can see the character sliding on the screen between the poses, allowing the camera to stay smooth. First though, the general problem with 3D stepped animation you didn't know you'll come across is Judder. Our eyes notice the character juddering back and forth on the screen. The way I did this was by constantly parenting and reparenting Ryuko to the camera on every other frame. What happens is that once you attach an object to the camera, an additive transformation layer is also added to your character. This thing first captures your character's location or in relation to the parented object, then tracks it with the object. The problem with the additive transform layer is that the animation continues to move while the root is attached to the camera, so weird misplacings can happen directly after frame 2. Like she's going into the building right here. Fantastic. Uh, another problem is that you can't copy and paste these additive layers because they rely on the original capture of where your character was in relation to the camera. The good news is that the parent can be all one layer across the added transformations. But also, the process that you have to do here is keep reparenting the character to the camera again. Just grabbing a new additive layer doesn't read your character's position in relation to the camera when it first spawns in. And another problem that can happen here is that every single time that you parent the character to the camera, you get this long layer bar when you only need two frames. So instead of dealing with all of that, I kind of duplicate the older two frames and then uh, parent between it. And what that does, it automatically cuts off the, uh, the new parent layer bar to exactly what you need. And then you can use this bookend again and again. It triple faster, about three more speed. Now here, I uh, left this area empty because I didn't want Ryuko to go through the wall uh, during this part of the animation. So it actually is helpful if you need to customize every single frame. This animation was exported from Blender at 30 FPS, then set to stepped mode. A problem with the import process from Blender or other places that Unreal Engine is kind of strict is on the stepped part. You can't have the animation in Blender have the slides included and import it to Unreal Engine because step mode will only pick up the key animation frames. Meanwhile, the linear animation adds a bunch of frames underneath your animation and that's unusable for stepped animation. How many times did I just say animation in a sentence? Another problem that springs up is that linear can find every single mistake in your animation and make it obvious. Look at that, that's, dis that's disgusting. <clears throat> anyway, switching back to intended stepped animation hid such problems, but this is just an example. Another limit to this approach is that you gotta have your camera work finalized. If the character slides in a way that's not with the camera, it just looks bad. Even if it's towards where it's meant to slide, it actually looks shaky instead of smooth. I noticed this when watching this scene in Gravity Rush's uh, Overture. In this scene, if we slow it down by a lot, You'll notice the cat isn't even falling perfectly in line with where she's meant to. She's attached to the camera, then falls in alignment again. So the camera is actually the most important thing when nailing this kind of style. What the hell is a style? She's falling down, right, down, right, down, right. With the camera, off the camera, with the camera, off the camera. Wax on, wax off. Now this isn't the only way to show stepped animation. What Guilty Gear and Honkai Impact does is lock the camera to the character. This means that whenever the character has a key animation, then the camera moves with it. The Honkai Impact 3 reburn animations do this as well for the whole thing. Although they did add an extra nifty trick where they hold the freeze frames just a bit longer to add a bit more to the slow motion portions. Like instead of freezing on just one frame, they freeze on two or three. Now this technique doesn't require any parenting at all, and it's actually quite a bit easier. Every frame that the character moves, you put down a keyframe on the camera. Then you highlight all of those and set their interpolation to constant. At full speed, this can look pretty good, and that's what I did in my first stepped animation test. 
It's also good for when your character needs to interact with something while the camera moves. As you can see near the end here, Ryuko's hand is kind of on the roof, off the roof, every little bit. So at this point, I should switch to the camera being locked to the character technique. So that I can get this kind of effect that Honkai Impact 3rd does. What a name, huh? I, I, that, that name's a mouthful. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was as easy and direct to understand as possible because this was hell to figure out.